Uh, welcome back to the 2012 International Go Symposium. Uh, this is day two. Um, and we'd like to welcome all of you. Uh, and I hope that uh, you're finding it interesting and entertaining. We are, anyway. Um, the first speaker is Thomas Wolfe from Canada. Uh, unfortunately, we got some technical difficulties, so we can't do any questions and answers after. Sorry, Thomas. But uh, this is his a talk email to will be, be on, on the record. website, so you can email uh, any questions you have, and he'll be glad to answer them. He's going to talk about basic SECI and Go, uh, and also including graphs. He, he wanted to change the title, but it was too late. Um, but you'll see that uh, there's also some graph uh, theory involved here. This is a talk to be recorded and given at uh, 2012 Go Symposium in Black Mountain on the 3rd and 4th of August. It uh, is about Seki and graphs. If you look up Sensei's library on the internet, then it says that it's a symbiosis between two groups. None of them lives unconditionally. For example here, if white makes a move on this liberty, then black can capture white and vice versa. Similarly here, where black and white share one liberty, so whoever moves here, which is the only uh, reasonable move for both, uh, will be captured in the next move. This seeker here is more complicated because each side can capture three stones. Uh, white can capture these three and black can capture these. But whoever captures these three stones and then attacks through this liberty the other side will lose the liberty race. Our talk, this talk will be concerned more with uh, generalization of this type of seeker, simpler one. The motivation is, well, strictly speaking, without knowing when to end the game, a year ago with uh, semi involving just shifts, rotation, deformations, so changing the shape of chains. And we were also not, we are not interested in non-terminal positions, so we are at l where both sides can still make moves, or even the introduction of cuts. So let me give an example. That here is a non-terminal non seki, where each side can make here up to two moves can be made and it's still a seki, but that's a terminal seki. Any move will instantly lead to a kill and the termination. All these positions here are equivalent for us because from here we can get to here by shifting upwards shifting to the right, shifting more up and to the right and here even further. So all of them are equivalent uh, for us. Even if we deform that position to here and then introduce a cut and shift this further, all these four zikis will be equivalent for us because the cut involves uh, living external chains and uh, we are not concerned with such modifications. Other examples of introducing cards are here. Here are two cards in introduced com compared to here. But all these three positions are equivalent for us, namely they involve a white chain having an eye and as another liberty, uh, a liberty which is shared with uh, two black chains which have one other liberty which is shared by a white chain which has an eye and that's the case for all of these three positions. So if we want to ignore such extra features then how should we represent a position that uh, avoids too many non-interesting details? What is typically used in computer Go papers are so-called common fate graphs where each liberty is represented by a node 
and each chain is represented no each liberty and each chain are represented by nodes and neighborhood relations are represented by edges so in this case here three uh, dark surrounded liberties nodes are correspond to these three liberties and um, these two changes chains correspond to these two red nodes and the black chain represent is represented by this blue node but this graph still has uh, irrelevant information for example this living chain is of no interest for the internal Zeki structure so we want a more compact graph and the first part of this talk will consider what I call basic Zeki which contains only chains which have each two liberties and possibly chains of one or two stones within an eye but they uh, don't make a difference and they will not be represented in our basic Zeki graphs by the way a, a graph is a mathematical object consisting of nodes which are linked by edges and we are looking at only only at positions which are terminal that means there are no uh, that means a move taking an opponent's liberty gets instantly captured so that is a Zeki position and the common fate graph would look like this with these nodes representing white chains these two nodes representing black chains and the other nodes representing liberties but what it really is is there is one liberty which has which is in an eye so it has only one chain as neighbor and this chain has one other liberty which is shared by another white chain which has another liberty which is shared by a black chain which has one other liberty so here this liberty then the white chain another liberty a white chain a liberty and the black chain and a liberty and that's the basic Zeke graph which we will use uh, for the next 20 minutes necessary properties of such graphs to represent the basic Zeke where edges which represent chains are colored they are uh, red or blue edges corresponding to white and black chains each node has at least one and at most four edges that means each liberty has at most four neighborhood chains and there has to be at least one red and a blue edge because otherwise having only white or only black chains the whole position would live and wouldn't be a Zeki here is a more uh, critical property if there would be two chains of one color ending in one and the same uh, liberty then these two chains must have the same other liberty not like in this picture here not like in this graph also not like in this graph but rather like this graph or that graph why is it the case well in this situation if white would make a move on this liberty then the resulting white chain would have two liberties still but the black chain would have only one liberty so it would not be a Zeki white could capture this black chain the same here whereas here if white captures or if white puts a stone on this liberty black can capture the resulting white chain similar to here another property if two nodes are linked to each other by edges of different color then these two nodes are all the nodes in the graph so two nodes can be linked by edges of only one color unless there are only two nodes 
So here these two nodes are linked by edges of different color and therefore there can be no other nodes. If a node has edges of only one color, then these edges may reach only two of the nodes. Okay, so here we have three edges of one color, which may share one and the same liberty, but then these three edges have must have only one other liberty, but they here have three other liberties. So this is not allowed. That here would, would be allowed, because these three edges uh, have only uh, two other nodes. Why is this not allowed? Because if white would make a move on this liberty, the resulting chain would have three liberties and would be able to capture that black chain, which has only two liberties. So in order for this basic Seki graph to represent the Seki, that may not occur. So the consequence of all these statements is that edges originating from one node can reach at most two other nodes. Now that means that the whole basic Seki is represented either by a linear or circular sequence of liberties. So it's a one-dimensional object where two neighboring liberties are connected by only chains of one color. And the case of two liberties uh, connected by black and white chains, so a node connected by two edges of different color, that can be seen as the smallest uh, case of a circular sequence, so it's uh, not a contradiction. So this resulting simple one-dimensional structure of all basic Seki allows us to generate encoding a basic Seki graph and uh, we will have a basic Seki. So what are the rules then between translation between basic Seki graphs and such a sequence of numbers? Well, a single node we can uh, write as a zero. If there is one edge linked to a node uh, we encode as a 1, and if it's a blue edge, then it's a 1 underscore. If there are two red edges corresponding to two white chains uh, participating in a liberty, then we take a 2, 2 underscore, and so on. Next, if we have a linear Zeki, linear one-dimensional structure, then we start with a 0. And if you have a circular Zeki, then we do not start with a zero. We don't need the zero. We can have an abbreviation where if a sequence of numbers rep repeats itself, like here, one to underscore three times, then we can write it as one to underscore to power three. And further, if we have two Sekis attached on a board, then we can link their encodings with a plus sign, as I will show in e example. So, that here is a linear Seki. We start with one liberty, represented by zero, have a white chain, which has another liberty. Um, white chain is represented by one, one white chain, and then two black chains represented by two underscore leading to one other liberty. This here is also a linear Seki where one liberty represented by zero is linked to another liberty with through uh, two white chains, the two here, and then two black chains represented by two underscore link this to another liberty. This here is also a linear Seki, starting here with a zero. With a zero, then one black chain uh, has one other liberty, and then two white chains link this liberty to the next one, and then one black chain links this to another liberty. So we have this encoding. 
that here looks like a circular Zeki, but it is linear. This liberty represented here by zero is linked with this black chain to that liberty, which is linked by this white chain to this liberty and so on. So we have zero, one underscore one, one underscore one and so on, which abbreviated uh, can be written down in this way. That here is a circular Seki. That black chain has this liberty, which is linked by this white chain to this liberty, which is linked by this white chain to this liberty, which is a liberty of the starting black chain, therefore it's circular, and we don't start here with a zero. Similarly here, that's a circular Seki, where three black chain link this, liberty to that one and then one white chain links this again to the initial liberty. So it's a circular Seki, no zero at the start. That is obviously circular. So a way to generate all basic Seki would be to start with a zero if we want to encode a Seki with linear topology, otherwise not starting with a zero and having a sequence of 1, 1 underscore, 2, 2 underscore, 3, 3 underscore. We only have to check that we have at least one white and one black chain, so at least one underscore number and one without underscore, and that because on a Go board each liberty can have only four neighbors at most, uh, the sum of two successive numbers can have not a bigger sum than four or if we have a circular Seki the first plus the last must also not be bigger than four. To avoid identical Seki's uh, we would check uh, switching underscore to non underscore which corresponds to black white switches and also a linear Seki we could start counting from one end or from the other, so reversing the sequence of numbers does also not generate a new Seki. Similarly with a circular uh, basic Seki, uh, the encoding is unique up to cyclic permutation, so instead of two, one underscore one, one underscore one two and so on uh, encode the same Seki. Here are a few points how to complicate a Seki. Looking at this picture it looks like a very difficult Seki but actually it is composed out of three Seki and we would see this if we would write down the graphs or if we look at this picture. The upper left corner is a Seki on its own. The lower left corner, lower right corner is a Seki on its own and all of the middle is another Seki. So the upper left corner is represented by this basic Seki graph with this encoding. The lower right corner has the same graph except, except that black and white are switched and the uh, Seki in the middle, where it's a linear Seki, which starts here with a zero, with a node, with a liberty, with an i, and therefore a an zero, and then we have two black chains linking to another liberty, two white chains to another liberty, black, white, black, white. So it gives this encoding, which is a nice short representation of this very difficult looking Seki. Here are two more ways of complicating a Seki by replacing this pattern through this pattern and through deformation from here to here, then having here a more difficult uh, Seki with a obviously difficult, uh, different encoding. Similarly here, we replace this pattern by that or this pattern by that, it's all the same pattern, which complicate the Seki by 
introducing uh, more chains or more nodes here. We can also create an eye like here, which would generate from this C key that one here, or from this C key, from this C key that one, or if we introduce both eyes, then we get this C key with two extra eyes from this initial C key. Bamboo joints, one can show that if there is a bamboo joint, then uh, only the then there can be only those chains uh, which are neighbor to these two liberties from a bamboo joint and no more. And then this bamboo joint can be split and the extra chain can be inserted. And which changes also the encoding, because here we have only one black chain participating in the Seki. Whereas here, then we have two, and we can extend this uh, simple stone, single stone, to two or more stones. One more feature: if we have four different chains neighboring to neighbor to one liberty, then their sequence can be black, white, black, white, and then the other sequence must also be black, white, black, white. If we go around this liberty, or we can have black, black, white, white, but then also the other liberty has to have the sequence black, black, white, white. What are challenges? Well, we might want to look into a Siki with more than two liberties per chain, and Siki is where one can start uh, can capture chains, but it's still a Ziki, or Ziki which even involve co. The rest of the talk will consider Ziki where chains have more than two liberties. One should mention the work of Vladimir Gurvich, which uh, who considers special Ziki without eyes, and where each liberty has exactly one white and one black neighboring chain. So his positions, or these positions, are encoded by matrices. For example, this matrix here, where each row is representing one black chain, so three black chains here, and each column is representing a white chain, so three white chains here. A problem is that not each such matrix can represent or not each such matrix represents a position on a go board. For example, this matrix does not represent a position on a go board. In order for having such a position, one would have uh, chains to cross each other, so to have two stones on one place on the board. That's not possible. Here's an example of a position which is really difficult to decide for a human player uh, whether any side can make another move. So, so if you think, okay, it's a terminal Seki, then please uh, try to find how to punish any side who makes any move. Like if black plays here, how should white punish black? Or if uh, white makes a move here or here, how could black punish white? And here's such a matrix representation. For example, uh, this here is a row corresponding here to a white chain, to this white chain, and it shares one liberty with this black chain. So with this black chain, it shares one liberty. So this is a matrix representation of this position. And here is the total number of liberties, so we see that these chains have not all the same number of liberties, and also 
the black chains may have uh, have here different numbers of liberties. By the way, this is a useful lemma given by Vladimir Kovic about uh, sufficient conditions for one uh, chain uh, being captured and not having a chance. So, uh, let us consider then chains with more than two liberties. For that we need new graphs. Now we need graphs where edges represent liberties and not chains and nodes represent chains and not liberties and the reason is that for these CK positions uh, each liberty has only two chains neighbor as neighbors so we can represent liberties by edges which have only two endpoints uh, but we have more than two liberties per chain so so now we need uh, a graph just the opposite way that edges represent liberties and nodes represent chains. The nodes which are the representing chains are white also because on the go board stones don't lie on top of each other. That means that the corresponding graph needs to be planar. That means it must be possible to draw a graph on a piece of paper without crossing edges. So what we are really looking for are bipartite planar graphs. Any such graphs uh, uh, one can show corresponds to a Ziki. So here's an example taken from Sensei's library. And that's a Ziki position. And that's a corresponding graph. For example, this node corresponds to this black chain. And this is one liberty, this edge is this liberty shared by also this white chain which this white chain represented by this white node. Now these nodes here are really just uh, this graph is really nothing but a cube, one has a cube shape you could see this if you take these three nodes and move them closer together to here, then you get this graph. Well, any planar graph has a dual graph, which is constructed by uh, giving each region here, such a triangle, giving it a, a node, and for each edge in the original graph, we have an edge linking the two nodes of the neighboring region. So that red graph here is a dual graph of, of this graph. So each planar graph has a dual graph, and the dual graph of a dual graph is the original graph. So that's a nice um, result or notation from graph theory, and one could wonder what this dual graph corresponds to in our on our go board well the nodes of the dual graph as it turns out are representing the cutting the cross cuts between two black and two two black and two white chains so we have here one cross cut here cross cut here one here one and here one and one on the outside board so these are five on the board and one outside board. And uh, that's a nice uh, demonstration how mathematics really describes graph theory, really describes Seki in a one-to-one -one way. Now this dual graph actually is the surface of an octagon the edges and corners of an octagon is has the same graph as our dual graph. So the dual graph of a cubic graph is an octagon and the dual of an octagon is a cube. Here's a way to generate infinitely many uh, such sekis. You just replace any such edge by this more complicated picture. 
recursively, so you can generate uh, as many Seki you want, if your go, go board is big enough. And in our previous case, there was a liberty here, like this one, which was shared by this white and this black chain. And if we replace it by this new construction here, all height and side with that liberty, and then this gives a new, more complicated uh, Seki, where each chain has three liberties, and uh, each liberty has a black and a white neighbor. Can there be Sekis which where each chain has four liberties? And the theorem of Kathy Cameron, she's a math professor in Toronto. Uh, it's not hard to show in a one page, is that there are no simple bipartite planar graphs that are four or higher regular. So what this means is there are no Seki with chains having each the same number of four or more liberties and where each liberty uh, has one black and one white chain as a neighbor. If we drop the requirement that each uh, two chains have only one shared liberty then we actually can have such Seki, where each chain has more than three liberties. Namely, it's coming also from graph theory, every three regular graph has a perfect matching. And this generates the opportunity to have higher regular graphs with multi edges. So, what does this mean? We can demonstrate in this picture. So, a perfect matching is a set of edges which uh, each link a black and a white chain, a uh, black and a white node, and all nodes are linked. For example, these here, these edges, link up all the nodes, and each node is linked only once. And what it corresponds to in, uh, on the Go board is that now we have here two shared liberties, here two shared liberties, represented by two edges and similarly here and here. There are other perfect matchings on this uh, graph, namely this edge, this, this and that. Uh, also constitute a perfect matching and if we take away here a liberty, here a liberty, here liberty, or to take a stone away from here, so that we have two shared liberties here, here and here, that corresponds to these extra edges, and that here is a Zeki position. One more perfect matching, as you could imagine, here, these four edges also link up all nodes, and if we duplicate them, then now the new position here with four more liberties also is a perfect match, uh, is, is also a Seki. Now we have infinitely many Seki positions, but are they real Seki? Or what do I mean with real Seki? Let's have a look at this uh, graph which represents. Uh, Seki, which we looked at earlier. If black, this black chain attacks this white chain by taking it the liberty, then this white chain is under threat because it has only two liberties and all the neighbors, neighboring black chains, have each three liberties. So the only way not to die is to get an extra liberty or extra liberties by catching this black chain taking away one of these two liberties. So let's say this one. Now this black chain will really get uh, captured and that's why this whole thing is a Zeki. But the two neighboring white chains are weakened which makes this black string uh, chain stronger. So this now is able to attack this white chain 
by taking this liberty. And the only thing uh, white can do, so white weakens this black chain, but it can weaken only one of these black chains. So if it weakens this, then this is still strong and can attack white further, taking here liberty. And now this white chain is really lost, so all what white can do is at least capture this black chain and now black will capture this white chain. So what this means is that the initial position is locally a seki, so any chain which makes a move is extended or takes a liberty from one of its neighbors will be captured, but uh, the other side will be able to capture a different chain if the distance between these two chains is uh, at, at least three. So if you look at this chain has as distance one neighbors these three white chains, as distance two neighbors these three black chains, and distance three neighbor that one. So by cashing in the few liberties this year has to weaken uh, distance one neighbors, distance two neighbors get strengthened and can attack distance three neighbors of the original chain. So what that means in a, uh, on a go board, uh, black here can attack the white chain, sacrifice its own black chain, but attack the distance three neighbor, the bigger white chain. Like uh, distance one neighbors are these here, these white chains, distance two neighbors are these black chains, and distance three neighbor is this white chain, which now gets captured. So globally, positions, all these positions which uh, looked so big, like, let's go quickly back to the this position also has two distance free neighbors, namely this white one and this black one, which are easy to identify in this notation by having here a zero. So that takes us to the end of the talk. Here are some references uh, if you want to go through this talk and listen to it more slowly and uh, verify all my statements and you can download it from this uh, web address. Thank you. Quite, quite interesting, Thomas. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um,